I have a BMW 3 Series E46 where the rain light sensor intermittent wipe stops working. Now, so far I've already replaced the unit for the rain light sensor um, with a part that was taken from an M3 that was purchased off of uh, the internet and uh, it worked. It was working fine and then it seemed to stop working. So this is kind of an odd problem and uh, not sure if I'm going to be able to hunt down what the real underlying problem is but I'm uh, going to go through some steps and see if I can figure this out. The system communicates over the K bus or the body bus and the general module and the instrument cluster play a role in the functions of this rain light sensor. The rain light sensor is actually attached to the windshield or at least a portion of it and then the electrical portion is actually behind the rear view mirror under the covers. Now this did have a glass replaced but it is a Pilkington glass which this is an OEM glass and uh, this all looks good there's no bubbles in the sensor. Now the way this works is once you put it into intermittent wipe which I already had that's off intermittent wipe it should do one wipe and then for each click it should do one wipe. And this is actually a sensitivity wheel for least to most sensitive. And once the sensor gets water on it, it can't, uh, or the, the light gets reflected back and it causes the system to initiate a wipe on the windshield. The odd thing here is that this was working fine once we replaced it. And that's all it should take to get this to wipe. I have a laptop with the older GT1 software that can do scanning and programming and coding. So I'm going to take a look and see if we have any fault codes. Alright, we'll let this load up. Go under diagnosis. E-series, E46, go down to the arrow, I have this just hooked up to the OBD2 OBD port to this laptop. If it's connected correctly and it can talk to the vehicle, it automatically identifies. And these are all of the control modules that the vehicle may have. So you do a short test. And that's going to read out the fault memories of all of these control units. Now you can see that has an exclamation point on it. That means there's no faults. If you have an X, that means that there's a fault stored. And the rain light sensor has its own module, so the RLS or rain light sensors over here. We do have a fault stored for the rain light sensor, which we also had on his original rain light sensor. I think it was for initialization. Oh, and the TCU. I'll have to take a look at that. The Bluetooth on this car is not working either. Alright, let's see what faults we have. TCU emergency call LED, GPS module communication fault, oh, that's interesting, and optical initialization frequency of 15. Interesting.
Now the rain sensor is on the K bus and the TCU is also on the K bus. So I don't know if these are going to be related or not. Let's just run this TCU test plane and just see what it says. Fuse 39, 10 amp fuse, reading vehicle order, okay. That's hilarious, that's pretty typical. This fault is entered by mistake. Ignore this fault. Well, fantastic, that's some great information. Really appreciate it. It's just odd, unless uh, maybe the owner pulled the wrong fuse and that's why this came up. And then emergency call LED should come on for two seconds when you're changing terminals. I'm pretty sure it came on. Now the emergency call LED is actually in the rearview mirror on this car. And there's that light SOS warning, so that's all working. Alright, so that comes on. I thought it did. And again, ignore the fall. Should be cleared and test module. Alright, so let's look at the rain light sensor test plan, which we ran this on the other rain light sensor as well. And here we can look at the wiring diagram. Fuse 15. This is a 5 amp fuse, this is going to be in the glove box. Here's our instrument cluster. This is a processor and it communicates over the K bus. If I go down to this component, this is going to be the rain light sensor. So we have a ground, there's our power supply on pin 1. This is our K bus, which there's other components on the K bus, keep in mind, that's what this little leg is here. And there's other components communicating over that K bus. And then we have our rain sensor, which is actually up uh, behind the rearview mirror. And then if we go up here, this is going to be the signal to the general module. And that's going to be requesting and monitoring the wiper function, which the wipers work. So the general module is actually working correctly for the wipers. So that's the confusion here. So the test plan says, reinitialization will be performed when the rain sensor is reinitialized. It is calibrated to suit the windshield. And we did this on the other one and it did not take care of it. And that's why we ended up replacing the rain light sensor with a working one. It was already coded and everything because I've run into problems where the newer BMW software doesn't like to code older cars. And that's why I actually have this laptop to take care of the older cars. So the windshield must be clean and free of defects in the vicinity of the rain sensor. So what I'm gonna do to clear the windshield is just initiate a wipe of the windshield and that's just gonna remove all of the water that I sprayed. So that the windshield at the rain light sensor, which is this portion right here, might be hard to see in the glare. And that's clear. It's a little bit of dirt on it. We'll clean that off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Old adaptation values were deleted. Care of the new adaptation procedure. Switch off the rain sensor. Switch off terminal 15 and terminal R. That means basically shut the key all the way off turn on terminal R, which is accessory, and terminal 15, which is basically all the lights are on. Wait for 10 seconds. The rain sensor is readapted to the windshield after 10 seconds have elapsed. Okay, so I have to switch off the rain sensor, go down, shut, make sure that's actually shut off. It is, because if I go down, it does the wipe. If I click it up, that means the rain sensor's on. And then shut off the key. And then switch on terminal R is the first position and terminal 15 is the second. All the instrument cluster lights come on. And then wait 10 seconds. Five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it should automatically do the adaptation. So then go forward. I just have a feeling that this isn't going to work. Brain sensor is checked in the next steps. Windshield wipers operate with any problem in wiper stage one and two. Yes, it does. Faults relating to the wiper are stored. They must be corrected first. I don't have any faults related to the wiper. Check the windshield wiper beforehand. Yep, that's good. Put on the rain sensor. Push the wiper switch up one click. Does the wiper perform one wipe cycle when the rain is sensor is switched on? Which it does. Oh, it didn't do it. Up one click. I have to actually click that once for it to. Hmm. Does the wiper perform one wipe when the rain sensor is switched on? You know, it, it didn't. Let's say no. And it's going to tell me it's. Yeah, replace the sensor. Encode and program the new control module. Which we can try to code it and see if that takes care of it. And then it ends the test plan. You know, it does register each individual click, but I don't think it's working correctly still. Let's just check it real quick. Right, so each click it registered. And when I'm down, if I go up one click, of course, now it did it. So if I go down to this position and go down, if I come up one click, okay. If I'm all the way down the bottom and I shut it off and turn it on, okay, so now it did one click. See, I don't think it's going to work though. Nope. Yeah, this is what we're, we're struggling with. It still doesn't work. I guess that's an interesting symptom that I just realized if I do cycle the key off and wait and cycle it on and I bring the wipers up to intermittent wipe let's just make sure it is if I come up one click okay it wiped that time kinda because I woke it up so if I cycle it off and cycle it on and then come up one click they don't do a wipe I have to move the wheel before they'll actually do a wipe. And then that would be least and most sensitive. Hmm. Let's take a look at this sensor, which is underneath the coverings for the rear view mirror. You do have to separate these. I just put my fingernails in between the bottom ridge to take these clamshells off. It's one side and then just turn the mirror so you can take the other side off. And here's the rain light sensor right here. To take this off, there's a slider on each side, the rain light sensor that slides down. I don't know if you can, ooh, I don't know if you can see that right here. And just using a little pocket screwdriver, slide these little tabs down and they will go to the unlock position. I gotta do the other side. Now this is the sensor. It's only held on by that plug up top, which is this one right here. This is the portion that stays on the windshield, which that all looks good. Here's our wiring. And we have a power, ground, the K bus is the white, red with the yellow tracer, and uh, the signal for uh, the instrument cluster. And uh, going to the, actually that's the K bus, and then the signal for the general module. So all these pins look good, everything's clean. This is how I removed it. You slide these down. You can take these all the way out if you have to. This is what it looks like on this side. So you're actually lining these up. You see they slide up and down. 
you want to line them up into that notch when you install it and then when you push it up it locks it into place so that has its own circuit board and that's all there is to it. it's just a little RLS module there's your part number this came out of an E46 M3 which basically has the same system and once it was installed it started working instantly so I thought it was totally good and then it stopped working again so it's a pretty odd situation try to cycle it on with the sensor unplugged let's just try something here that's all the way up okay so if I remove the sensor you know the, the owner of this car said that he wanted it if I can't figure out how to get the rain light sensor to start working um, he'd like the rain the light sensor to work which is part of that so that it won't work that way I'm thinking if you left it unplugged but part of that uh, the light sensor in this rain light sensor is working and it's only the intermittent wipe that stops working but with it unplugged if I go up one oops too many if I go up one click all right again it didn't wipe it still does its identification interesting and stops oh there we go so now it's actually still did a wipe because it's actually reverted to regular intermittent wipes intermittent wipe system without using the sensor and that's with the sensor unplugged now I was wondering if I unplugged it and plugged it back in if it would start to work like when we originally replaced it and no change you know also we had our initialization but what I want to do is clear fault memory sometimes this computer has a little bit of a glitch to it and it's a struggle to get down to some of these buttons go back to my vehicle identification page and this is where I can do a quick delete which isn't very quick but it does delete the fault memory so this goes in and actually clears all the codes I'm wondering if it's going to clear that rain sensor code you know this is true troubleshooting because this is an odd problem not very typical nope it did not clear oh no I'm only on nav so far so the other thing I can try to do is code it and if that doesn't work I could try to turn off the rain sensitive wiping under coding and maybe the automatic headlights will still work that's what he'd like to just have the automatic headlights working at a minimum not sure if it's something that I can accomplish, but I'm going to see if I can figure it out. Alright, the rain light sensor fault cleared. Well, let's go out of this. And go under coding. I need to close this virtual machine. And I'm going to open up Frogman Triple S. Start the virtual machine. While that's loading, I'm going to run a test of the light sensor in, that's in the rain light sensor. There's our switch on automatic. I'm in the sun, so uh, they're off. If I take a piece of cardboard and I tape that over the windshield sensor, this light should come on. Yep, looks good. And the headlight should turn on. 
I got a bulb on and there's our light. So the light sensor is working correctly. Alright, now that Progman is open, which is for programming, I'm going to do a new session. Uh, it registers as an ops head. That's my link to the car. I'm going to hit continue. Don't think I need to put a description in, so I'll just skip that. Here's our coding. We have a 3 Series. We have an E46. Pretty strange problem overall. You know, to have a known good right rain light sensor, plug it in, and we sprayed the windshield working right away. And then, it, I think it worked when he drove away, I think it rained, it was working fine, and then all of a sudden it stopped working. So there's, this is probably something bigger than a rain light sensor and coating. Um, it could be the instrument cluster itself, which is a processor, which, uh, you know, I don't know if it's, that would be a little extreme to replace an expensive component for intermittent wipe to work. So we'll, if this doesn't work after coding, we'll go back in and initialize it with uh, the GT1. Then we'll go under car key memory. Actually, we might be able to look now too, because car key memory is done through programming on this car. So we could take a look while we're here and see if we can actually shut that function off, but still enable it to turn on the automatic headlights. Okay, the screen comes up here, hit continue. All right, so you have load software, CKM is car key memory, vehicle and management. Let's look under car key memory and see what we have for options here. It's gonna read out the car key memory in the vehicle. You know, what's nice on the newer cars, all of that car key memory function, you can change yourself like on an E90 through the stock or through the iDrive if your vehicle's equipped. And on newer vehicles, it's all through the iDrive. Now when uh, the car is reading something out, it actually sends a signal, so the radio actually kicked on. Well, let's see what we can see under Seat mirror memory, windscreen wipers. So let's see, rain sensor active. So I can shut that off, just the rain sensor. Now is that going to shut off the automatic driving lights? Home light period. You know, there's a lot of interesting things in here. Now you have anti theft system. This is active on this car. You can change your central locking. You can change interior lighting, lighting, open tailgate. I'm not sure what that is. Lock at, unlock without open, automatic lock after driving off. So you start driving, your automatic locks lock. Power windows, one touch feature. A lot of times you replace a general module, this is actually set to off you have to go in here and turn it on or else the one-touch windows won't work. Convenience opening. We have our interior light options. Exterior lights so you can have your daytime running lights. This is not active on this car. Winch windscreen wipers. We can set to not active for the rain sensor. So that's interesting. still try the coating first and then we can try this. At least it is an option. So let's switch back to the coating. So I'm going to hit end here. And end again. 
Oop, that brought me all the way out. New session. Three series. Forty six. All right, let that come up. All right, I'm going to do the coding of the rain light sensor. So go to load software. I'm going to say yes for control units been replaced. Now it has to determine the list of control units. Once it's done determining, you have your list of control units over on the right, and you look for the one that you want to replace. You do need the acronym, which is RLS, Rain Light Sensor. Marked as replaced. Get to continue here. Hit continue. It's going to run through a coding process. Still being determined. You know, again, I'm wondering if that when I turn the wipers up one click to intermittent wipe it doesn't do one wipe. I'm wondering if the wiper switch itself has a problem and that's why it's not working. You know, a lot of times troubleshooting like this is a little bit of guesswork because you don't have the information. You know the computer doesn't tell you exactly what's wrong. You still have to take an educated guess. Alright so it says it takes one minute and hit start. You know, the wipers sometimes work intermittently right now, but they're not responding to any kind of uh, input from rain on the sensor. The only thing that seems out of place is that when I turn that on and go up one click, then uh, I don't get that first wipe. I have to go to the next click for the sensitivity wheel. Of course, the computer turned on the radio again. Now the rain light sensor is being encoded right now. I do have the wiper on. This really hasn't changed the behavior of the wiper. The automatic light has come on even though it is in the sun. Continue. Okay, my automatic headlight light on the switch, the LED did go off. Now it should have saved the car key memory values that uh, were already in the vehicle. And it should restore them. There's the radio again. Then it gives you the final report, which says that replacement was carried out successfully. Measures plan, check, check control memory, or car key memory backup success RLS has been encoded and it cleared the fault memory and everything should be working normally let's finish that here all right now I can't do an initialization again here I have to do that through the GT1 so I'm not going to change the car key memory yet I'm going to go back and uh, try to initialize the rain light sensor again and see if that works. Now it's been coded, so in theory it should work. So I'm gonna end out of here.
That'll bring me back to the main page. And with this laptop, I purchased this off of eBay. Basically, it's the old Prog Band and GT1 software that I'm used to. You know, now we have ISPA Next, but uh, this old software is great for the do it yourself or, or, you know, for a lot of stuff on these older cars. Control Alt allows me to close out each program. Actually, I wonder if I can minimize that and still open Triple S. I mean, the, the disk. Cool, I think I can. All right, I didn't want to bore you setting that back up, but it looks like uh, we still have that fault for the rain light sensor, and that did not clear. So there's definitely something with the sensor or the optic on the windshield maybe even. It's hard to say. We're gonna try another initialization now that it's been coded. run through the initialization again. Oops. Didn't want to do that. Optical initialization frequency of two. Yeah, it knows there's a problem with itself here. So if I initialize it, that fault should really clear. This is that same test plan. Switch off the rain sensor, yep. Switch off terminal 15. Terminal R, switch on, wait 10 seconds, and then it's readapted. Switch off. Switch the terminal on, wait 10 seconds. Okay, that's 10 seconds. Go to the next. Rain sensor is checked. All right, now, if I say no here, it's obviously gonna tell me to replace the sensor. So I'm just gonna say yes. I actually wanna just get through the test plan. Right, and it says turn the ner knurled knob on the wiper switch up, increase sensitivity. Every time the knob is turned up direction, the wipers must perform one wipe cycle. It does do that. I'm going to say yes again. I want to see if that fault clears. And then it wants it to wet the windshield. If it doesn't work, it's going to want you to initialize it again or tell you that the rain light sensor is bad again. So I'm just going to say yes again. This doesn't know. This is really just whatever I tell it. This is going to just help guide you. So you can check the sensor. The voltage supply and bus link are okay. Yeah, well, yeah, if I had a bad voltage supply, the RLS sensor wouldn't even show up on the short test. Um, I'm not sure why it thinks the bus link is okay. Probably because of how I answered the questions. So then you can check each sensor, which is basically the same test that it runs you through. You know, does the stock work? And if you wet the windshield. So I'm gonna run through this. I'm curious if that fault is gonna come back for the rain light sensor. So I wanna go back here. 
And I want to delete. And then rescan it and see if that fault goes away. All right, that's done the clearing. If I remember correctly, if you double click on a module after it's cleared, you can carry out an individual scan. So I'm just scanning just the rain light sensor. No fault came back that time. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So what if I try a couple of key cycles, will my fault come back? Let's try that. Far off. Or do I have to turn on the rain light sensor for it to come back? Now remember my, op my uh, optical element fault for the uh, initialization of the windshield fault came back at least twice and that's because I had cycled the key a few times. Back on again. Shut it off again. Two, three, Let's see what we got. And a start. Oh, look at that. There it is. So it took a couple of key cycles and that fault came back. And I didn't even turn it on. So either something is damaging. There it is. Optical initialization again. Something's either damaging the rain light sensor. Maybe we got unlucky and it ended up getting a one that was failing again. I mean, it does happen. I have run into some weird problems like that. You know, we could try a new sensor and a new programming, which we haven't done yet. But uh, I don't think anything that I do right now is going to correct this. You know, and I'd be just guessing, is it that switch? You know, is it a module that's causing this? You know, what's interesting too is that I, I just smelt the sensor and it does have a little bit of a, a burnt smell to it. So, I mean, that sensor may have burnt out already. You know, is the car causing that? Is it just that we got a bad sensor? You know, the only way to know at this point is to continue troubleshooting. This is true diagnosis when you have a problem like this. You know, there's no true way to figure this out. You have to replace components, you know, and it can get expensive sometimes. Well, since I know that's not going to work, I'm going to stop beating a dead horse here and let's try to turn off the uh, intermittent wipe with the rain light sensor and change it to true intermittent wipe using car key memory. So I'm going to exit out of this and switch back over to Progman. Probably don't really have to terminate it like this, but habit. Control Alt brings me up to my main window screen here where I can Man is busy, okay. I thought that's where I closed this but I'm gonna power off the disc and switch over to Prog Man. Let's do full view, which gives me my option here for a new session. And let's try to make this work so that uh, the owner can at least continue to use his automatic headlights and hopefully have intermittent wipe at the same time, but not rain light sensor. And then uh, the option next, I guess if I was going to take a shot, I'd probably get a new sensor instead of a used one and try to code it and uh, see if the fault comes back but it really could be one of those issues that you spend way too much money on and never even solve because, I mean, replacing an instrument cluster and, uh, you know, really serious K-Bus diagnosis where you could run a separate 
harness through the car to isolate just that one circuit. Um, you can put a body module into it, you know, which would take care of, and the switch would take care of all of the components. And you know, you can't even guarantee that that's going to fix it. It could be one of those gremlins that you can never even work out. I've had a few, some really weird ones over the years, working with BMWs for a little over 13 years. You know, this is where it's nice if you have a friend with the same car, you can start stealing some parts off of it. Try an instrument cluster, try the general module, you know, swap out the rain light sensor. Does this rain light sensor work in another E46? That would actually show that the problem's all in the car. You know, there's some good testing that can be done if you have another car, if you have access to another car. You know, my, I do have my older E46, which is a 99. That actually has an AIC, automatic interval control, which is not an RLS. This is a later car. This is a 2006, 2005 production. So I can't use that other car as a donor because the two systems are not the same. So all I can do is car key memory it. This is what he requested if I wasn't able to reach a resolution. Can I make the automatic lights work and switch to regular intermittent white? So we're gonna go under car key memory. All right, car key memory's up. I can jump there by going to windscreen wipers. Here's my rain, rain sensor. It doesn't say anything about the light sensor. Don't know if that's going to turn off the light sensor, but we switch it to not active, and then you hit encode car. All right, then we hit save, and it's going to adopt those settings to car key memory. So there it is, rain sensor is no longer active. Hit finish. Theory it would switch it to intermittent white. I don't know. I've never tried this before. Usually, what it does now is it rereads the car key memory setting, brings up the list again, and shows you that it has changed the settings. All right, I didn't really solve this. Hopefully, I've come up with the workaround for uh, the owner of this car, who's been a great customer of mine and and a friend. I was hoping I'd be able to solve this with programming, but there's something deeper going on. And uh, this is the same problem that we had with the original rain light sensor. So I think, in my opinion, I think the problem is in the vehicle somewhere. You know, maybe the instrument cluster, maybe the stock switch, although, you know, I kind of doubt it. Uh, maybe the general module. But uh, the resolution maybe is to switch the car key memory. You, know, you do need a special program to do this or the dealer could do it for you to switch the car key memory on an E46. This is not something you can do yourself. Although, uh, you know, a trip to the dealer, this computer, I'm trying to remember, I mean, it was a few hundred dollars and I, I did buy this off of an individual off of eBay that already had it loaded onto a computer. It's almost worth it. You could scan your car, you can do all these cool functions, you can change your car key memory yourself, you know, and, um, it's relatively simple to do. You could follow the instructions that I did to change a lot of uh, cool settings. So let's see if the automatic headlights work and did I actually switch the um, intermittent wipe over? I don't know, but it looks like it took, so let's test this out. Now I am in auto right here on the switch and I have my nice piece of cardboard that my daughter put a heart on <laughs> and I'm going to cover the sensor up here with a piece of cardboard and this LED should come on if my automatic headlights are working there we go so that is still working so that's a good thing so the next step is to test and there's my light just went back out off because I took my cardboard off. 
So the next step is to try the intermittent wipes and let's see what that coating feature actually did. So I'm off, make sure I just press down. That's that quick windshield clearing option. So I'm gonna go up to the first position. It did one wipe right away. You know what, I'm gonna try something too. I'm gonna shut the car off. Remember before when I clicked the switch up, it didn't wipe right away after I did a key cycle. I'm just kind of curious if it's going to do the same thing now. No, it did not. So that tells me that it is not the switch most likely, right? Remember last time I cycled the key off and I went up to the first position, it's because of that initialization problem. So, I mean, we're back to the rain light sensor being the, the failure. Like I said, it smells a little burnt. Not sure why. Um, is the car somehow spiking it? You know, it's kind of unlikely. Oh, there we go. There, it just wiped. You know, is the car spiking the sensor? It's pretty unlikely. Maybe we got a bad sensor again. It's just odd to have two sensors do the same thing. So I'm gonna count, and let's see. This is the intermittent position one. As soon as that wiper wipes again, we'll just start counting, and then we'll go up click by click to see if this, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. About twenty-four, twenty-five seconds. All right, so let's move to the next position. And it should wipe so I can start counting right then. There's the wipe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So about fifteen seconds. So this is good, this is working. Next one. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine seconds, nine to ten seconds, I guess, right there. And then on full, one, two, three, four, four seconds. So there we go. You know, this isn't uh, totally fixed. Obviously, we have still a problem with that rain light sensor, but I've come up with a nice resolution by changing the the car key memory option I switched off and I didn't know if you could do it or not this is the first time I've done this actually shut off just the rain sensor portion of that RLS because your rain light sensor that light sensor is part of the LRS so it's communicating too. keep in mind it knows for the light portion you know if there's light input on the windshield now it is a different portion of the circuit and uh, you know, so again, that means my K bus should be communicating. I'm talking to my instrument cluster. You know, it just comes down to maybe it is the junction box then, which is also part of the processor. You know, this is kind of one of those that uh, are the junction box. That's on a newer car, E90, the general module. You know, maybe it is the general module. It's really an odd situation here. Now, the wipers you might think aren't moving very very fast um, keep in mind that uh, this is road speed dependent so you know with the road speed it is going to wipe faster but this is the resolution so thanks for watching I hope uh, this helps somebody out there at least you have some troubleshooting you can see what real diagnosis is um, please uh, thank you to all I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers um, please post likes and I appreciate all the support um, by watching my videos and uh, until the next one take care guys sorry one more quick thing that I want to add now if you pull that fuse that was listed in that wiring diagram you will switch to automatic uh, wiping so it will be the regular interval wiping just like I've created by changing the car key memory the only downfall is that the automatic uh, headlights are also not going to work so this is the resolution to let the automatic headlights still operate 
with an issue with the rain light sensor. The only way you can correct that is by changing it with coding. And you can only do that through car key memory, using a laptop, and uh, the BMW software.